Sure. So thank you for being here. Hopefully uh, you'll see some cool stuff, find some things interesting, and want to know more about what we have and what you already have. Um, got a great team from Highland I'll introduce in a minute, but right now I'm going to bring up President of DTI, Ryan White. All right, thank you very much, and I think uh, we know a lot of the people in this room, and uh, so this is an auto auction focused event, so we get to tailor right to, to y'all's message. For those of you that, that aren't as familiar with DTI and who we are and what we do, DTI is a software company here in Greensboro, and we've spent the last 35 years helping companies take their inefficient processes and information and turn that into profit. And we do that through uh, application mm -hmm. of both business process adjustments and improvements, uh, as well as we sell software, like Highland Software, that will take some of those manual, cumbersome uh, activities that are kind of repetitive in nature and, and just drag down the business, and we can automate a lot with that. So for today, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about why DTI is working with you and, and what really drove the first engagement and how we got all started. I know I uh, see a lot of familiar faces in the room, so you've probably heard some of that story. Uh, and then we're going to bring up Highland, who's going to talk about digital transformation, which is kind of a buzz, which is a buzzword in our industry, but it's really all about how people go from the old way of doing things to the new way of doing things. And I mean, we just tack the digital world on front of it, right? So people are interacting more mobily now. Your expectations are different for how your work your work should occur and be presented to you. And so working through those things is, is what we help companies do. So with that, I'd like to bring up Michelle to give just a, a brief background on what, how we got started working together and what your project is, is about and, and why we're here. So what our objectives are. So Michelle? Thanks again for taking time out of your busy day. I know, I know it's tomorrow's sale day and we've got a lot to do. But uh, I had worked with DTI in the past and uh, their support was impeccable before. They were quick to respond. We had a, an issue where Sonia came to us and said, we've got to meet a, a DMV audit and we need to be scanning the uh, bill of sale and the title work. And in order to, to meet those requirements, I contacted DTI and they in turn said, well, well, Highland software is the best to use and recommended that. Then we got with Jeff and Holly and decided to go ahead and purchase that software and get that implemented. Well, Mr. Green then saw the advantages to having that scanned and he said, well, let's see if we can't automate a little bit more and go paperless and start getting the uh, customer signatures and merge that on the bill of sale and streamline that process a little bit. So the Highland software actually is helping with those processes and stepping through how we need to accomplish that. Uh, so hopefully our goal is within the next 60 days, that's aggressive, but in the next 60 days, hopefully we'll be able to uh, scan the title work, move the bill of sale straight from the 400 to a server, take that signature that's electronically uh, captured and merge that with the bill of sale and um, get that process moving more, more smoothly. And um, the other thing that we had, we were looking at ways that you might think to use that software to better, better some of your processes uh, by saving different documents and have it accessible with security levels. So that's pretty much where we're at, and that's why we've asked uh, uh, DTI to come in and help us out. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. So, uh, great introduction. So as you're going through today, one of the things that we're uh, hoping is that you think about your particular area of responsibility within the organization, or things that you know about the other green family of companies, and how we might be able to leverage what you've already purchased and, and make that available to more and more yeah. people. So that's a goal for today. So that's all I have. Okay. So uh, I'd like to bring up um, Colleen Albert with Highland Software. And she is Thank a you. product evangelist yeah. with Highland. And we are lucky to have her. Her schedule keeps her busy traveling around the company talking about all the different ways that people can use the software in really an educational role. 
So with that, I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to you. <laughs> all good. Thank you, Ryan, and thank you all for having me. And I echo Michelle's sentiments. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to spend uh, a few minutes, a few hours, have a little lunch, uh, learn a little something uh, with us today as we share some information about OnBase. So if I could ask you to cover up your name tag for just a moment, yeah. I'm going to see if I can remember the name of everyone in this room. So from DTI, we have Brad and Ryan and Russell. Uh, from Highland, I'm Colleen. Uh, Pauline, who you'll hear from in a bit, uh, the share base. Katie and Moore are on the account uh, kind of sales time. All right, so those are the obvious ones. Now let me see if I can remember the names of the people that I just met. In the back row, we have Jeff and Holly and Chris. There we have Logan, David, Jeff and Steven, Cindy, David, Michelle, Kim, and Sandy. Is that right? All right. <laughs> Jokes and card tricks and all kinds of things. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about today is digital transformation, and digital transformation means a lot of things to a lot of different people. It's the digitally adept employee that has more information in the palm of their hand on their phone than often they do on their work environment on their PC in their organization. You know, it's a smart home. It's Alexa. It's online, it's mobile, it's all of these different applications of technology. Digital transformation means so many different things to so many people. You know, as a presenter, a full-time presenter and evangelist, you know, I have this little like, I hate when people start a presentation with the definition of the topic. And here I am doing it. But what I loved about this particular definition of transformation is that it is a marked change in form, nature, or appearance. And keep that in mind as we use a fun Transformers analogy to talk about what digital transformation can mean to Greensboro Auto. As I began to do a little more research on digital transformation, you know, I came across this Wikipedia page. And it says here that transformation is really about innovation. It's more than just supporting traditional methods of going digital or mobile or cloud or paperless, but it's new, innovative ways to transform something that we have today and making it something new in the future. And it, this Wikipedia article gave a great example of digital transformation with regard to the traditional phone booths that you might see in London. And they talked about how in the city of London, these old phone booths are historic. You know, they, they are a significant part of the architecture and the look and the feel of the city of London. But nobody's making pay phone calls anymore. So what they decided to do was to transform what was a phone booth into a Wi-Fi hotspot. And shortly after, you know, covering this article and reading about it and having a little chuckle to myself, you know, I visited London and sure enough, are these Wi-Fi hotspots that are the old phone booths and then there's all these people like huddled around them trying to like capture a signal. But, but it's a great practical example of what digital transformation is. The Guardian newspaper says that the three key drivers of digital transformation are consumer demand, technology, and competition. And if I were to add my fourth to that list, it would also be compliance. So industry regulations and the needs to meet compliance. And we all know this in our own lives. You know, I got my first mobile phone in 1998. 1998. I was going off to college and my dad realized that it would actually be cheaper for me to call him if he got a phone and I got a phone and we use like that shared family planning you know you could like only call after nine o'clock at night but it was cheaper than making a long distance phone call from the dorm room and I didn't take the phone anywhere like I, I didn't it didn't actually leave the room I just used it to call home because it was cheaper to have that plan never you know, in a million years did I think at that time when I had that phone that someday I'd be using it to check the weather, to take a photo, to post that photo to social media, to research what restaurant I was going to eat at, to cash a check, and so much more. That is a great example of consumers demanding more technology changing and, you know, competition driving changes in the industry. I think the same is true, you know, for automobiles. Up until six months ago, I was driving a 2008 Nissan Rogue. I loved this car, you know. I'm not one to spend tons of money on cars. It got me where I needed to be, but it got to the point, you know, as it does with cars, where it was going to cost me more to fix it than it was just to buy a new car. 
Well, when I got a new Nissan Pathfinder, 2018 Nissan Pathfinder, it was like, oh my God, I jumped ahead like 10 years. <laughs> like lights going off everywhere and bells and whistles and heated seats and more cup holders than I have hands. And that is another great example of consumers demanding, you know, USB ports and navigation and embedded Sirius. And we live in Cleveland, Ohio, so a heated steering wheel, technology changing and competition driving changes, regardless of the industry, whether it's mobile phones or automobiles. This whole concept of digital transformation, you know, got me thinking back to my childhood, you know, and, and the Transformers toy. And not only are the toys themselves, they transform from, you know, a, a, a car into an Autobot, but think of how Transformers as an industry, as a franchise, has transformed itself as well. From a little toy that was popular in the 80s to a comic book to an action figure to a, a new movie that came out in 2007, and then another Transformers movie that came out in 2018, I mean, they are transforming themselves as a, a concept as well. Now I'll admit, you know, I wasn't too much for the Transformers as a kid, so I'm one of four kids. I have a brother and two sisters. And as a result, we had a surplus of Barbies and there's never enough Ken dolls to go around. So oftentimes the Barbie would have to be like paired up with this little Transformer type character. And that, that is to the extent of my Transformers knowledge. But Transformers make sense for what we're trying to do in our organizations. How do we take that car? How do we take our content? How do we take what we have today and make it something new? So for those who are maybe new to Transformers, and I'm sure you get in the most basic sense, we're all you know, at least vaguely familiar. This is Bumblebee, the Camaro, who transforms into the Autobot. Completely different shapes. Never when you look at this Autobot do you think, that was probably once a car, probably once a Camaro. This is transformation. It's a marked change in form, nature, or appearance. And that's what we're all trying to do. You know, with ourselves personally, I want to become the best version of myself in our lives, in our homes, with our families, and within our work lives. So we've got the car, we're going to transform that to an Autobot. So if the car today is the digital content within your organization, you know, that could be anything from an HR file to a legal contract to an accounts payable invoice that needs to be paid, and we want to transform that. You know, that is digital transformation. So how do we take what we have today and make it something completely new? And just so you know, Transformers is a real thing. This is a real live Transformer robot that was built in Japan in 2017. It is really a car that two people can sit in, and it transforms into this you know, Autobot type machine. I'm not really sure what the purpose is of this, but it does exist. It does exist. I don't know where that robot's going with two people, you know, driving it, or, or when this transformation's taking place, maybe busy roads, I don't know. But transformers are a real thing. So what we're gonna talk about today is what is the spark needed for transformation? How do we get from where we are today and the digital content and information that we have today to something completely new? We're going to talk about the stages of transformation, and there are three. And then lastly, what is the enemy of digital transformation? And then not listed in this agenda, we're going to have lunch. So that's after this. Okay. All right, so first let's talk about the spark needed for transformation. When we first meet Bumblebee the Camaro, it, it's sitting in this like dirty old garage. It's got like one of the tarps over it. And this is how we first meet this car. So not to get too Transformers geeky on you, but how does the Camaro turn into the Autobot? Well, there is this being that they call the Allspark. It's this kind of you know, inanimate object that has the power to transform a machine into a sentient being, which is a robot that kind of has some intellect to it. And the Allspark is what ignites that transformation. So if our content, the information, the documents, the paper that we have today is the content, what is the AllSpark? And you may think to yourself, well, is it digitization? Is it taking all of the, maybe the paper that we have and making it electronic? Well, sure, in, in the most narrow sense, you have to begin to eliminate paper. You have to go electronic. You know, the, the concept of going paperless is almost like ground zero. That's the prerequisite. That's the first step. That's step zero, maybe. And we, of course, at Highland and with DTI, we have tools to do that. 
It's taking paper content, digitizing it, making it electronic, or it's taking content that exists today that is electronic and identifying intelligently information about it. So you may think, well, we have like some electronic content. We've got these file shares and they're full of content and it's already digital, it's already electronic. But I think oftentimes that digital content has the same challenges of paper. If it's not structured and it's not organized and it's not managed, it can be difficult to find. Retention is a challenge. There's duplicate copies. Can't find what you're looking for. Content is disconnected. So what we aim to do at Highland is to identify the content, both what this content or document is, but also information about it. And that's where the Brainware Intelligent Capture Engine comes into place. So think of the content that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. What Brainware does really well is not just scanning it in and OCRing it, it's that it can intelligently classify what the document is. Just like your human eye could look at a resume and a cover letter for every person in this room and know which is which, even though they're all organized a little bit differently, that's what Brainware can do. And it gets its name from the fact that it emulates the human brain to look for common characteristics to be able to make that identification. Then it extracts data about it. A resume for who and where do they live and what's their phone number and what's their email address. Well, how do we do that? We know what those things look like. You know, if you start to see some letters followed by a street or a road or an apartment number or you see an at symbol, that's the email address. Brainware has the same intelligence to extract that metadata. And then most importantly, kind of where we see these light bulbs, this is where the, the big piece of the intelligence takes place. It can validate that the data extracted is correct. So let's say it extracts a purchase order number or an invoice number. You know, how does it know that that order number of 543 is correct? Well, it can validate it back to the purchasing system. Or how does it know that this total of $4 is correct? Well, it can do basic math. You know, two items at $2 equals four. It has that intelligence built in to identify data and ensure that that data is correct. So here is a, a screen of what Brainware looks like behind the scenes. This is not normally something that someone would see, maybe the occasional you know, case where we need a human to make a decision. But here is the invoice on the right-hand side. And I think what strikes me the most is you know, how kind of crappy the quality of this invoice is. Yet not only could we identify that it is an invoice, but we'll take one data field, for example, the invoice number. How does Brainware know that of all the numbers on this invoice, that's the invoice number? Well, just like we look for context clues, it makes these concentric circles around the data, and it says, oh, invoice pound, this has gotta be the invoice number. And then it associates that as a piece of metadata on the document. It can do math down at the bottom and validate totals. It can identify, so here's an example where it got the purchase order number correct, but we don't have this particular purchase order number on file. So it alerts someone via workflow process that we need to take a look at. So it identifies that this is an invoice, it looks for those common characteristics, it extracts data about it, and it validates that that information is correct. And that's where we start. And it's almost like step one, ground zero, this is where we begin. But is simply having digital information enough? It's certainly a start, but think of all of the places today where you have digital information. And we talked about those file shares, like which are my arch nemesis, because it's so easy to just put stuff in them, but then you just accumulate all of this data that becomes difficult to find. You know, is email transformational? Maybe 20 years ago, not today. I remember when SharePoint was gonna like save the world. There were like these SharePoint team sites popping up everywhere. So much so that Highland even created a little tool that was like site provisioning for Microsoft SharePoint where we could actually help organizations manage the process of their SharePoint sites. When do we wanna spin one up? Who has access? When do we wanna tear it down? Um, and I have nothing against cloud-based sharing apps, but that could potentially be just another place to dump content that is unorganized and unmanaged. I think the biggest issue with all of these is that if not implemented correctly, they all just become their own little data silo with different permissions and another place to put things. And the problem is that they may all contain information about the same entity, the same order, the same customer, the same vendor, the same employee, but none of that data is connected. A popular application of digital transformation that I'll sometimes hear from customers 
it is, yeah, we're, we're beginning the process of digital transformation. We put this form up on the website. People are now printing out that form. They're filling it out and they're turning it back into us. Or maybe even better, they have an electronic form up there, but the process behind that electronic form has not been organized and has not been supported digitally. Unless you have the back office procedures in place, just having an electronic form or having electronic content is not enough. And I think that just having digital information and digital documents and digital content is not the same as digital transformation. So if we go back to the old Spark, there's one thing that I didn't mention, and that's that all machines transformed by the old Spark are connected. You, know, you think of the Transformers movie, all of those Autobots, they kind of work together, they, they're this army you know, fighting for world peace. Well, when we think of what is our spark for digital transformation, what is your spark here at Greensboro Auto for digital transformation, it's having a collective vision. It's having an enterprise vision for what the transformation should be. And if you're lucky enough, you've got you know, support from the top and the whole organization is going to digitally transform. That's not always the case. Maybe it's everyone working on this project or this team you know, we all agree, we're all in, we've all bought in, and we're all going to manage related digital content in the same way. We all have the same goal. We're going to look at all the systems and the applications that house information related to the project that we're trying to accomplish, and we're going to have a shared vision for managing it. And we're going to integrate and break down some of those silos so that all of that information can be connected. And that's where you start. It's everybody on the same project team having a shared vision, looking at all of the places where information may lie related to the subject at hand or the project at hand, and saying, how can we connect all of these applications? It's looking at all of the applications in your organization, maybe enterprise-wide, maybe project-wide or department-wide, and saying, which of these make sense? Which ones do we need to keep because they drive the business? Or we still need the notifications from email. We still need that SharePoint site and that cloud-based app. But maybe we can get rid of the Excel spreadsheet that manages some of this because we've got a better tool. It's determining which one of these makes sense, which one don't. And then the ones that we're going to keep, connecting them all with some sort of hub or centralized repository in the middle. And that's what OnBase can be. That centralized hub, that shared vision for managing related content. It's not necessarily replacing all of these things, but it's acting at that, that hub, the center to which all the spokes on that wheel are connected. And these are just a small handful of some of the applications in which we have a purpose-built integration where we're sharing data bi-directionally between systems. Another popular application is just bringing OnBase directly into Outlook. I get an email message that asks a question, I hop right into OnBase to find the answer, and I'm right back to that email. So what is the Spark? It's going paperless, of course, it's integrating applications, but really most importantly, it's having a shared vision for how all of this is gonna work, whether it's at the micro level or the macro level. So now we're gonna talk about the stages of transformation. Once we've gone paperless, we've begun to integrate, we have this shared vision. You know, what are the stages of transformation? And I think there are distinctly three. So when we start with the car, there are three distinct stages that the car goes through before it transforms into the Autobot. First, the car starts to drive itself. The Camaro Bumblebee starts to drive, you know, without a driver. Then it starts talking. It starts communicating through the horn and then through the radio. And then lastly, it completely changes appearance. So first, we're going to talk about the content driving itself. When you have applications such as these that are siloed and not connected, this content is not driving itself. It's sitting there waiting for someone to come find it to do something. It's waiting for the driver to open the door, to sit in the car, and to do something. But when the content is connected to that central hub, something like an OnBase, this is when the content can begin to drive itself. This is when we can begin to allow technology to answer human questions. Well, have you tried? Yeah. <laughs> and this is where and what we all want to be doing all the time. We do it 
in our day-to-day -day lives without even thinking about it. Every time you get an email, when you come home from work and you get the actual paper mail, what are you doing? You're saying, is this a bill I've already paid and they're just sending me a statement? Okay, send it over here. Is this junk? Okay, I'll tear it up. Is this something that I do actually have to respond to? Yes. You're asking human questions to your content all the time. In your work life, every time you receive something, are you asking questions about it? Probably. What do I need to do? Is this true? Is that true? Does this rule apply? Do I need to ask this person for something? What if we could allow the technology to answer as many questions as possible before we ever had to get a user involved? And I know this is a, a stereotypical example, but it's one that makes sense. An invoice comes in. There are all these questions that we might potentially ask about this particular invoice before lastly we process the payment. What if we could allow the technology to answer all of these questions, and there might be an exception where we need a human user, that's fine. They're only brought into the process to manage that exception. And then lastly, we process the payment. Here's a behind the scenes look at how these processes are configured. It's simply like drawing it out on a whiteboard and then configuring it in Onbase. And then the interface to which the user makes the decision when we need them to get involved looks something like this. It could be just bringing up a browser, seeing the items, related information, and being able to make that decision. Here's our browser-based solution. No local install. You click on a link in an email. Here's when we need that user involved. We give them everything they need to make that decision. And we have so many different applications of content driving itself. From contracts processes, to HR processes, to incident managements, new projects, service requests, customer service requests and help tickets, and so many more. What starts the process, what do we need to know, and how can we resolve it? So next, the car starts to talk. And in the Camaro and the Bumblebee world, that's using the horn, that is you know, uh, using the radio, there's this great scene where, uh, in the 2007 Transformers movie, so Shia LaBeouf, who's Sam, he's kind of like the protagonist, and Megan Fox is Michaela. He's got like this crush on her. And Bumblebee, the Camaro, starts using the radio to kind of like urge Sam to kind of go after Michaela a little bit. And you know, just as there's like this moment where he might want to try and kiss her, like you know, Bumblebee starts, you know, playing on the radio a little Marvin Gaye, like, when I get that feeling, I won't, I won't sing the rest, you know, business <laughs> environment, but, you know, you, you get the idea. It uses the radio to begin to communicate or begin to talk. What are some of the ways our content can talk to us? Well, maybe when a request has been received, a status update, maybe sharing content in that cloud-based sharing app. You know, an email notification that lets you know we've got your item, or maybe in this case, we need something more from you. Click on this link, upload the content securely, and get it over to us. Here's one of my favorite ways in which we can use an email notification and embed some on-base workflow activity right inside that message. So now once the technology has answered all the questions, and maybe we do need that human involved, we're giving them the decision that we need them to make and all the information about it, and they never have to leave their email system. And that's really just one example. But what have we done here? We've integrated OnBase, which is that hub. We're still using email to set the notifications and the status updates. We all want the email that says it's been received. We're looking at it. It's processing. Here's where you can go to get more information. We're maybe using that cloud-based sharing app, that ShareBase, to send information securely or to ask for information back. Don't email me, actually just upload it to this secure folder and we'll bring it into OnBase, that additional information that we need. So it's not eliminating email or eliminating the cloud-based storage app, it's simply integrating them. But these are just you know, some examples. Here's another way in which the content can talk to us. Each one of these little tiles represents worker information that the user needs. Here's invoices you need to approve, decisions you need to make documents, reports, all surface to the user. It's talking directly to them instead of them having to go search for it. And these little dashboards can look however a user may like. This is one of my favorite examples. You know, I talked about the pains of Windows Explorer. You think of a Windows Explorer folder. For that folder to get created, the user has to create a new folder, give it a name, put the content in it. In the case of OnBase, we have this same organizational system, but these folders create and populate themselves. 
We get a new document in and he says, oh, this belongs to project 123. Do we have a folder for 123? Okay, put it in. If we don't, create that folder, then put the document in the folder. Not only can these folders create and populate themselves, they can also tell us what we have and also what content we're missing. And we have reporting that behind the scenes that says, boy, for every employee, we know we should have these 30 things on file. And they should all be from 2018. We can send a notification that says we're missing something or this is about to expire. So now we're combining the process driving itself and the content talking. And who does it talk to? It talks to the end user customer. It talks to internal employees and staff. It talks to management and so many more. Who do we need to update? That's who the content can talk to. And then lastly, the content changes appearance. Bumblebee completely transforms into the Autobot to the sense of where it's almost unrecognizable. And I'm going to give you just a few examples. One of my favorites are some applications where we actually bring location, so GIS and, and maps, into the equation. You know, in OnBase, this is just you know, one of the, the several interfaces that we have, we have a list of documents. And we're all familiar with lists of documents, I mean, whether it's OnBase or whether it's Excel. And we have information about that content. You know, here's the list of all the cars, all the employees, all the projects. Here's the list. What we can actually do in OnBase is right-click on that content and send it to an interactive map. We have applications with Esri, also with Google Maps. And how did we, you know, find where this content was? Well, we had address information. We had a place name, we had a zip code, we had a state code, whatever we know about its location. And now this to me is an example of digital transformation. It's simple, but it is a marked change in form, nature, appearance. What was a list of content now becomes this picture where we can see distribution and density and location as another factor in the decision making. We can change the base map, we can add external data. So here are the claims and here's the weather. So these claims probably make sense and these don't. Directly behind each one of these little pinpoints are the Esri data, so that's the location information, as well as the document itself. And you think of the way that maps have changed in our own lives. It used to be like, oh my gosh, this map quest is the best thing ever. I can print out these directions, I'm gonna have them next to me, and then I'm like driving looking at the directions, you know, and now, it's turn by turn directions that not only tell you where to go, but also when there's construction or possible police or delays or where the nearest Starbucks is, you know, the most important information. And that's it. It's thinking about how to use data and content and information in new ways. And I encourage you to think about ways that you can use location as information regarding the data that you have today. Of course, reporting is another way. You know, you've got all these processes, all these transactions happening all the time. What about visibility into the bigger picture? This is a great example in AP. How many invoice exceptions do we have? How many have paid? How many are non-PO based? You know, what are the totals by vendor? What are the different statuses of the invoices? Here's examples. This is one of my favorite, another great example of digital transformation. One of my favorites, we actually borrowed this from a customer who had been using OnBase and AP for years and years. And so they've been automating their invoice processing and everything's going great, almost following this whole guideline of, okay, I want the content to drive itself, I'm gonna communicate, I only wanna get the person involved when I need a decision. They did some basic reporting on how many invoices they processed and what the dollar amounts were and where they could get some early discounts. And then they digitally transformed and went one step further. After one of their employees requisitions an order, they get a survey that <coughs> ask them questions about the vendor. Doesn't matter if they were ordering computer, hardware, software, pens and paper, office supplies, whether it was a contractor that painted the walls, there was a survey. And the employee then rated that vendor. Were they good to work with? Were they responsive? How was the service? Did we get what we ordered? And they began to rate all of their vendors. So they digitally transformed in a way their accounts payable process where they said, here are the approved vendors, here are the preferred vendors, here are the vendors in red that we no longer want to do business with. And they cut their ties and they said, where can we replace these vendors and in what way? Where are we getting some of our goods from? Just a way in which they transformed their process. It wasn't necessarily about how fast can we process these invoices anymore. They were already getting there. 
It's how can we improve the experience of our employees and ultimately our end customer, because the customer is really king, by picking the best possible vendors who provide the best service. You can see lots of different applications. So our you know, reporting capabilities that you work with DTI to get, they include all of these maps out of the box. So these are just different shape files. And how does it know, you know like where these different transactions took place or where the employees live, you know, whatever we're trying to track here? Maybe there's just a two-digit state code. So this map, which is a shape file, each one of these little shapes, we already know that you know, this is OH and this is FL and this is CA. And if the state code on the content matches that two digit, then we can be able to apply it automatically. There's no other binding really that needs to take place. So lots of opportunities. These are all interactive. As you click on different pieces, you can begin to get more information. So using maps, using reporting, and then lastly, something transformative is that of case management. We use this. Um, it, extensively in Highland case management. So there's the, the typical process that is very linear. You know, a, a request comes in and I'm gonna fulfill that request and I'm gonna close it. You know, it's pretty basic. It's gonna follow these standard steps. But sometimes there are things like a contract, like an employee incident, like a records request that aren't always as linear. And instead this case file maybe needs to be open so that we can track data or information about it. We manage with a staff of 12 um, uh, attorneys, you know, contract administrators. Last year at Highland, we processed almost 7,000 new contracts with a staff of about 12 using this case management application. The contract process will typically start with an electronic form, but remember, just having this form on a website is not digital transformation. Enabling the staff behind the scenes to manage the process is what is transformative. So the request comes in for a new contract with a new customer or a new vendor, and we can see all of that data. But we can also see all of the statuses that this contract process may go through. We use this extensively at Highland for employee incidents or for IT help desk tickets. It becomes this little case that sometimes is linear, but in other cases is not. We can see data about the contract. In this case, we can see the clause, the contracts where a particular clause is being used. We can use all of that reporting. We can actually draft the contract automatically directly out of case management. This is just one application for the case management tool. Another way in which we use it at Highland is for our IT help desk. And I think that's a good example of how sometimes, let's say I have you know, a computer problem. Sometimes it's up, the end key is stuck, we gave Colleen a new keyboard, she's fine, the incident is closed. Other cases, they, our IT help desk might get a request that says, boy, my computer's really slow, my laptop is really loud. But that could be any number of things. We tried this, we tried that, we re the machine, we tried you know, rebooting, we tried reinstalling. There's all of these different pieces that come into play and it becomes this little case where there's notifications that are sent out that are the status, there's the workflow behind the scenes where the content is driving itself. And now they can report on you know, not just what you know, employees are maybe the most productive in fulfilling these requests, but are there particular uh, departments at Highland that are more guilty than others in terms of submitting requests in the first place? All of these different metrics are possible. You know, here's another example. This is an information request. I need information. It's a form. Well, then here's what the application looks like behind the scenes. The request comes in. It was collected. We packaged it up. We created that PDF. We have all the details about it. Here's where we're going to share information. Here's the requester. Here's all of the documents to which it relates. There are so many applications for case management, it's crazy. And we have thousands of customers using case management to transform what was an Excel spreadsheet, what was a, a Lotus Notes database or an Access database into a, an image-enabled, document-enabled, workflow process, you know, automated notification system to manage that unpredictable process. One of my favorite stories of case management, completely you know, unrelated to uh, Greensboro Auto Auction, is that of the Wisconsin Department of Corrections. So they use case management to manage employee incidents. So any person in the state penitentiary has an opportunity to fill out a form with whatever their complaint is, whatever their incident is. Sometimes they're too cold and they need a new blanket, and so that's an easy request to fulfill. Sometimes, unfortunately, the incident is much bigger. 
you know, I as an inmate am having a problem with another inmate or with a corrections officer, we can see how that would quickly spawn into a case. Maybe we need a, a third party legal team involved or a social worker. We want to interview the other inmate. We want to interview the corrections officer. We want to collect all these different pieces of collateral. And they talk about how, you know, not only has their process been streamlined, but they have visibility into corrections officers and into inmates and to particular penitentiaries in the state system. They also you know, can make generalizations, like well, there's a lot of people requesting blankets, maybe they're cold, or a lot of people complaining about the same corrections officers. And not only have they improved you know, the processes, but the inmates also now feel like they're being heard, they're being seen. And in all, they will talk about how the, the satisfaction of everyone involved has been improved because of case management. Notre Dame University uses case management to manage the first year experience of their students because they found that if the student stays through the first year, more likely they are to, to graduate successfully from the organization. What they had found that information about their students was like all over the place. We have some information at the bursar, financial information. We have a little bit about their transcripts. We have some from the athletic department where they had a meeting with this counselor and that wasn't recorded. So they use case management to collect all of that data and create one student record. It is essential to support the internal staff with the right tools to fulfill these requests. All right, so now that we've talked about the AllSpark that's the paper list, the integration, that everybody getting on the same page. We've talked about the stages of transformation. We're lastly going to end with the enemy of digital transformation. And then we eat. All right, so first we talk about the good guys. You know, Bumblebee is part of the Autobots, and they are this army of connected, transformed, sentient beings that are working together towards world peace. Well, what does that look like in our organizations? You know, that is the enterprise information platform. That's taking OnBase, which you already have, and integrating it with the other applications that you have within your IT infrastructure, your IT stack. And that integration can take shape and form in several different ways. Whether it's a bi-directional system integration, whether it's a purpose-built integration, it's starting with one application and then moving to the rest. So that all of these applications, all of these systems are connected. And then we think about the bad guy. Did anybody remember Decepticon? That term, that name, yeah, right? And I, I think this is the, the perfect example for the enemy of digital transformation. Because just like the Decepticons kind of look like the Autobots, like they, they look and kind of feel the same. They're the same basic looking thing. They're deceptive. They're not good guys. They're bad guys. And that's the same thing with the enemy of digital transformation. It looks and it feels like it might be a good thing, but really it's not. It's deceptive. So what is the enemy of digital transformation? It's a single purpose cloud-based application. You might be thinking, what? What does that mean? Well, that is an individual departmental manager or business user saying, I've got a problem within my world and I want to solve it. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna look for a piece of technology, a piece of software that I think might meet my needs and better my business. And so they go out and they find this cloud-based app and it seems to solve their problem. And they think, they feel like they're doing a good thing. Well, why is that the enemy? Why is that deceptive? Well, because this now single purpose cloud-based app is not connected to the other applications which may also have information related to that transaction. Maybe IT wasn't involved and they know nothing about it, so how is this thing being supported? What does the maintenance look like? What does the contract look like? So you can see why just this single siloed application adding one more to the stack is deceptive. Seemingly a good thing, but if it's not connected, it's not integrated, the content isn't talking and related to the other pieces of content that make up that transaction record or file of information, it's not really as great as it seems. So if we were to do a, a sequel, it would almost be like the dark side of the moon, that shadow IT, that business user pretending to be IT, kind of like, you know, requisitioning their own application in their own world that they're going to manage and they're going to pay for via subscription that's not connected back to the overall IT infrastructure. So as we conclude, I had an opportunity last year to attend a, a Gartner 
IT Expo kind of conference, and I was just an attendee, and it was just an opportunity to listen and learn and see what's new kind of in the digital transformation IT space. And one of the sessions that I attended, they had a variety of CIOs from a variety of industries. The companies were all of different shapes and sizes on a panel. And it's exactly what you're thinking. It's like all of these suits sitting in these like high stools kind of uncomfortably. And then one guy trying, like the cheesy sales guy, trying to like, you know, be funny and ask these guys questions about digital transformation. And you know, they, they asked all kinds of questions. The first question which I'll never forget was digital transformation, fantasy or reality? Every single one of them said, digital transformation is a reality. And not only do we have to digitally transform, you know, in, in order to survive in our industries, but really to thrive. And they cited examples that we all know, like Netflix and Uber, who are changing the face of their industry. So they said, absolutely, it is a reality. Then they said, okay, what are some of the things that you are doing to keep up with digital transformation. Of course, they all said things like technology. They also gave a little more practical examples where they have actually appointed an officer of digital transformation. One said, well, I have this new role in my IT world, the director of collaboration and content <coughs> services. And that particular title came from the fact that not only do the people need to collaborate, but the content needs to collaborate and it's not so much about the management, but it's about serving the end user, whether that's my staff or my customers. So a lot of kind of practical examples in there. And then they all said, every one of them said, that there has to be some sort of hub, some sort of enterprise information system or enterprise content management system that as at the hub of all of this, that is that central connected place to which all of these other applications and content can be connected. And for all of you, for us here, that hub is on base. So it's now looking at what are the other applications that house data, how can we get them connected, how can we get content talking and driving itself and transforming some of the processes from what they look like today. So with that, what is our old spark? It's that connectedness, that shared vision, it's going paperless, and it's really just thinking in new ways, you know, working together collaboratively to decide, you know, how can we take what we're doing today, and maybe make it a little bit different, a little bit more electronic, a little bit more connected, serve it up in a different way. And with that, I thank you all so much. Appreciate your time. All right. And I